for the youth of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. Well, Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby promising the city's youth that justice will be served. But as the nation watched Baltimore's youth destroy buildings and attack cops, our next guest says it is clear community mentors and leaders have dropped the ball. Our next guest started a nationwide tour to help at-risk youth interact with police officers. He's a former Alabama State Trooper, Air Force veteran, founder of Be Someone, and the recipient of the FBI Community Leader Award, Oren Hudson. I'd love to have your resume. Oren, thanks for being with us on Fox & Friends Weekend. Oh, it's great to be here, Anna, and today is the best day of my life. Would you like to know why? Tell me. I get to share with the world what I'm committed to do. I'm committed to teaching our young people how to think strategically about their future, get your head up, get your pants up, get your grades up, and the big one, never give up. Well, in this letter, this open letter that you have, I've got my hands on here, an open letter to unarmed African Americans, and the headline is, Dear Black People, Stop Running from the Police. Now, some would say that's a very provocative headline. What did you mean and what is your message? Well, do the right thing. When you make the right moves, you get the right results. Nature is neutral. The ground plays no favor. Evil will never win over good. So all you got to do is make the right move and good things will happen. No doubt there's a rift between many communities and, you know, law enforcement. So what is it that, that you're advocating? I mean, do police officers need to spend more time in schools, go to parades, go to where the kids are, play in the sports? I mean, what do you do in these, these um, communities in particular that are socioeconomically really uh, under hardships? Well, the main thing you got to realize is power is an illusion. Uh, when I was a state troop, I had the blue light, I had the badge, I had the bulletproof vest. But you got to treat everybody you stop like the most important person in the world because power is an illusion. And whatever you do for others, you're doing for yourself. So treat people like the most important person in the world and you won't have any problems. We all are one. The word universe means one. So the key to success in all fields is to take care of people, treat them better than you want to be treated. And all the problems will go away. Think it out, don't shoot it out. Brains before bullets. That's the motto of one organization that brought a life-size chess set to Lithonia yesterday, all in the name of peace and positivity. Be Someone Incorporated hosted a free community chess day. The event centered around the idea that if you make the right moves in life, no matter who you are or where you come from, you can achieve success. Get in the game. We want them to, you know, the life we save may be our own. I teach the children, I teach our community and these children as though my life depends on it because it does. We got to teach young people that, that you're better than that. And yes, you can. You can be someone if you believe and if you make the right moves. After Atlanta, Orrin Hudson is taking his message to Baltimore, Ferguson, Chicago, and Cleveland. And I'm willing to be a part of that equation, and therefore I am announcing my candidacy for President of the United States of America. So there you go. That was Dr. Ben Carson in an interview last night with CBS News affiliate WKRC, a good place to start with our round table today. And joining us now is Warren Hudson, the youth mentor, American or African American youth mentor and former law enforcement officer, and also former Air Force Airman, and Ron Hosko, former assistant director at the FBI. It's good to have everybody with us. Happy to be with you. Let's go back to Ben Carson. Warren, thanks for joining us. Uh, Dr. Carson, as you just heard, announced his presidential run over the weekend. The neurosurgeon once worked at Baltimore's John Hopkins Hospital. Mm -hmm. So I want to get your thoughts. Do urban communities need more mentors and leaders like Dr. Carson? I, th I think we need people, uh, foot soldiers on the ground. Uh, I myself, for one, I'm a foot soldier on the ground. I have a lot of mud on my boots. So we need people working in the trenches, teaching our young people how to take action in the right way because if, you, if you're burning the buildings down then you're following the follow. We got to change the game. It's called follow the leader and be a leader. And do you think Dr. Carson is that leader? I think he can be a part of the team but when you need people there that's hands-on, been there, done that. I'm in the trenches every day just out there fighting and teaching young people the importance of thinking and making good choices and 
every move you make has a consequence. We've got to push that method. Consequences has everything has a consequence. All right, Orrin, you mentioned about guys with boots on getting into these communities, but I want to talk all real quickly about Marilyn Mosby and something that Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz said. We'll get to you, uh, back to you in a second, but let's go ahead and take this question to Ron because here's what uh, how Alan Dershowitz had to say. He thinks that Marilyn Mosby's news conference was motivated by political expediency and short-term public safety rather than strong evidence. He says the charges are outrageous and irresponsible. Ron, what do you say? Well, I think that uh, we're at the beginning of this process with respect to these six police officers. It wasn't politically expedient to charge them and make uh, and hopefully push the rioting and the, the voices of division to the side for a little bit, uh, certainly. Uh, her, her comments sounded like a uh, political pep rally as much as the thoughtful comments of a prosecutor uh, where they have serious work ahead. These charges are just the beginning. We are a long, long way from the end. And did she overstep? Did she overcharge? Uh, very likely. I, I think she's got her work cut out for her now. Now, Orrin, you talked about the need to get involved in these communities, and this is what I think you were talking about specifically, your role as an Alabama state trooper and also your uh, involvement in the Air Force. You served in the Air Force. Marilyn Mosby also, also chose to serve her community, but what did you think about her comments during that news conference? I think what she did is brilliant, and I think what she did was, I mean, it was a brilliant move because, I mean, we got to look at it this way. If the facts don't work out, then we're good. But I think based on what she did, it was brilliant. Because the city, no one got killed, no one got hurt, so we're good. So everything is peaceful. She made a brilliant move. And then we'll just, we'll just follow the facts, follow the facts. You know, I pray for everybody that is involved. I was a state trooper. I've been there. I know what it's like. But at the same time, that's why I pray for both sides because... At the end of the day, she made a smart move because if she would have went the other way, it would have been horrible. So she made a brilliant move. But don't move you think that's going to happen time. anyway if, if these charges, if these guys are acquitted? Well, by the end, we'll sell it down and we'll work it out. It'll be good. I'll okay. be in there pushing it and I'll be in there doing a lot of training. And so we'll be good. But for right now, we need, to, we need <laughs> peace right now. All right. And we'll deal with that later. And I'm on a mission to teach young people brains before bullets. Think it out, don't shoot it out. Get your head up, get your pants up, get your grades up, and the big one, never give up. Children in the Gaza City Schools after school program have been spending time this week learning the game of chess and the life lessons that can come from the game. Former Alabama State Trooper Orrin Hudson is leading the program, which is being held at the Center for Cultural Arts in downtown Gadsden. Today, Hudson played a round of speed chess with the kids by playing 59 games all at the same time. Hudson travels around the South using the game of chess as a means to reach students and teach them life lessons that he hopes will stay with them forever. To move ahead, you must think ahead. Chess teaches you pattern recognition. And chess is about fighting for what you want, fighting for your dreams, moving towards your dreams. And once you stop moving toward what you want, what you don't want takes over. So you got to constantly move toward what you want. You got to play with the end in mind, stay focused, and keep the main thing the main thing. Uh, Hudson started his program 14 years ago and has reached about 40,000 kids to date. The award-winning speaker, educator, and chess champion says that his goal is to eventually be a positive influence on the lives of at least one million children. You can visit his website at besomeone.org. Uh, all right, we know that playing games is good for kids, but there's one game in particular that not only helps kids in school, but can teach them valuable life lessons. And here to explain, we're happy to welcome the author of One Move at a Time, Orrin Hudson. Nice to have you here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here today. It's the best day of my life. Would you like to know why? Why? I get to meet two brilliant people simultaneously. Oh, when, when is that going to happen? <laughs> right now. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I first heard about uh, Chess for Success from uh, Philip Margolin, who's a, a local uh, mystery writer of, of note. Uh, explain this program. It's wonderful for kids. Well, it's teaching children critical thinking, how to think ahead, how to think things through, because there's, there's choices, there's consequences, and we got to check, challenge, and change the consciousness.
business of our community and teach children that every move you make matters, that no one's better than you, and that you win or lose based on the decisions that you make. So it's not about blame, it's about aim, and we teach them to aim high. Just changed your life, didn't it, as a child? Tell us what happened. I went to an, I was in a game, and we were doing crazy things like they'll say, breaking this, do it, breaking that, do it, steal that inner tube out of that truck, do it. And my teacher told me I need to think for myself. He said, come back out to school, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And he taught me how to play chess, and he told me you got to think, to move ahead, you got to think ahead. And chess saved my life, all my life, to a teacher who took time to teach me to think.